Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Lori Wingard. In our show tonight, we'll visit with Blue Planet Software, Tetris Online, and Blue Planet Foundation, all in the Blue Planet offices at Harbor Court downtown. We'll meet founder Hank Rogers and some of the other executives and gamers there. We'll also talk with Jeff Michalina of Blue Planet Foundation. To start, we spoke with VP David Kwok and Marketing Director Casey Pelkey to get a handle on how things work at Blue Planet Software. Tetris, as you know, uh, is one of the most popular casual games in the world. Uh, recently, we celebrated our 25th anniversary. That was very exciting. Uh, we got a lot of uh, good feedback from fans. Mr. Arakawa uh, and Hank Rogers are very good friends. In fact, Mr. Arakawa is right across the hall here in Honolulu. Yes, <laughs> yes. He uh, after he retired from Nintendo, uh, now works for Tetris Online, together with Hank and together with Alexei Pajitnov, the creator of Tetris, uh, Facebook with 500 million uh, users worldwide, uh, playing uh, casual games uh, is where the future is uh, right now. Tetris requires, you know, buttons to, to move the, the Tetraminos. Well, uh, we, we're now coming up with a, a, a way to play Tetris with the mouse or on touch screen devices with the finger. It's his, one of his life's missions to get Hawaii off oil, fossil fuels, and then Hawaii is setting the example for the world. Believe it or not, when uh, the Blue Planet Foundation was started, um, uh, the energy issue was not as hot as, as it is now. It was before Al Gore. It was before Inconvenient Truth. So the big message was to get the message out. The next step of Blue Planet Foundation was to uh, hold uh, a conference out at uh, Kapolei with some of the world's leading thinkers uh, on, on energy and alternate energy and where the country is going with respect to energy. And then, of course, the next chapter after that was the hiring of Jeff Michalina from the Sierra Club, who is very active in, in, in change and legislative change. Just today, uh, Blue Planet Foundation was recognized by the House and shortly before by the Senate as being you know, significant in Hawaii of bringing about this change. What we're doing on Facebook with our game Tetris Battle, um, it's a social environment. People like to interact with each other. And so what we've done is we've taken the game, um, which has enhanced, graphically it's changed a lot. There's a lot of different things that the Tetris company has done to the game to make it better than it was. Um, and what we've done is we've layered the interaction between the players. So when you are playing head-to-head, -head, the fact that you can have a match, you can talk to the person that you're playing with. And then we've added kind of a virtual economy to it where you can earn things over time. The more you play, the more you get. If you want a game that looks just like it did on the Game Boy many, many years ago, you can have that look. And you can change the style to uh, accommodate that. And that's something that we think is really important because in the social space, we think the players want to express who they are. Where we have about a half a million people that play every day, and they generate over six million games a day played, and each game is about three minutes in length. So they're doing spending quite a bit of time there. So Tetris right now, we're working with a developer in Japan, Hudson, on the new Nintendo 3DS platform. So now you're taking a game and you're trying to add a different layer to it where you have the Z axis of, you know, it's not just playing off the Y and the X, it's all of a sudden you've got a Z and I have depth to deal with. And so you're, you're telling a team that not only from a development standpoint you have to think differently, but the gameplay should change too. Imagine a, a platform like Microsoft where you take Connect and usually you're holding a device or using a keyboard. Uh, in Connect, it's just space, right? It's my hands out in space. So imagine if I can grab a piece and move it. You know, it's not. Can I make my thumb move fast enough? I'll just grab a piece and put it here. And uh, and then how do I do that so it's fun? It's not just to do it to apply the technology, but when you're done, you better be smiling and you better want to tell all your friends about it. And if we can if we can accomplish both of those, it's a win-win situation. Then we spoke with gamers Sean Terras and Ace Yume, who are building a better and better Tetris game for players around the world. We'll do uh, meetings um, about the design, usually, and we'll do meetings um, kind of as we get playable versions of the games. We'll kind of get together. We'll kind of go through the flow of the playable game, and then we'll you know, start 
start talking about how different screens look or how you know how the user is flowing through the application and then um, sometimes people will just come up with ideas of, of you know this isn't quite this doesn't quite seem right and here's an idea of how that'll improve so it's a real collaborative effort and uh, you know luckily we have a audio engineer Brian that's uh, He's able to compose music as well as do the actual audio engineering. So we've, uh, you know, that's been a real valuable resource to us. It's pretty, uh, pretty casual, casual and relaxed. We have fairly flexible uh, core work hours. Um, but, I mean, the amazing thing is that the team is like really dedicated to kind of creating a quality product. So. Um, you know, they kind of self-manage themselves and they'll work overtime without being asked to work overtime. Probably hardcore games still have a greater installed base, but I think we're right at the point where that's changing because these casual games on Facebook are attracting so many users that they're um, becoming just huge. When you finish the game and release it, you're not done. You still have to service that game for as long as people are playing it. So every time uh, you know a project gets to a state where we call it finished, we still have to have a team that is assigned to that and servicing it. Uh, and what we're developing uh, called Tetris Battle is a very unique product that uh, is one of the only, uh, it's actually maybe the only commercially successful multiplayer game in Facebook right now. A lot of people has been asking us why there are not uh, enough multiplayer games in the uh, online space of uh, Facebook or social gaming, and uh, one of the reasons is uh, critical mass. Uh, you don't have enough people, so you're not having a good experience, and you're not having a good experience, so uh, people don't come back. So we designed a system where this one actually kind of, we kind of say that uh, it negates time, and you get, you get to play uh, a same multiplayer experience that you can uh, play synchronously against other people around the world and they don't actually realize that it's the person's not there. We kind of uh, designed it in a way that you play it against somebody that's not actually live out there but it feels as live as live. So far we have uh, 70 people working in the studio, mm -hmm. 17, yeah. and uh, I, I believe six are programmers, we have QA, we have artists, we have designers. Uh, one thing unique about our studio is uh, we kind of uh, took advantage of the fact that we're in Hawaii and we hired uh, people from very uh, different cultures. Uh, nowadays social games is uh, very complex. We need to understand how the customer thinks to uh, design good UIs. Uh, we need to have people with uh, economics background to do uh, make great uh, projection models, do uh, price optimization. So. Uh, we need people with different talents, not just one. So you would have to set uh, the knowledge fundamental base very broad to be able to uh, bring your tower very high. Where uh, programmers, we look for somebody who will be able to dig in one path very deep uh, with persistence, with determination, and they wouldn't stop, you know. It's, it's a process of uh, letting your ideas come out. So if we are very strict on it, uh, people will be very shy to give out their uh, ideas. So uh, we're very, very uh, relaxed then. Because Facebook itself is uh, 365 days, 24-7, we have to keep our service at the same time, 24-7. And uh, we, we might have 20,000 people around the world playing our game right at this moment. So if there's an issue, we have to uh, take, uh, take it very seriously and uh, solve it very fast. Imagine Ace was online with his friends. Down at the bottom, there's a bar that shows all your friends online. In this demo, there aren't any friends there. But if his friends were online, it would say they're live, and he can invite each one of them in. And now he's gone to uh, playing strangers uh, in an asynchronous format to playing friends in a synchronous format. We spoke with CEO Hank Rogers, the visionary who created Blue Planet in the first place and made it a global experience. The definition of sport is kind of changing yeah. uh, from being a just a physical exercise to something which could be a purely a mental exercise. And uh, Tetris certainly falls into that category. Uh, the other thing about Tetris is it, it's, it's been around for 25 years and there are 
very few other computer games that have been around all that time that people still play. And uh, people play Tetris now more than they've ever played Tetris. It's sold uh, over 100 and I think something like 10 million copies on mobile phones, 7 million on iPhone. Licensees come and go, but the people who are in those licensees working on Tetris, they're still around someplace. And, and so the core group of people that we have are people that, that, uh, that really love Tetris and that, that, that believe in Tetris. And so, you know, no matter where you are, you will come and, and join us if, uh, if you have a talent. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, working on Tetris. And, it, you know, I'm still working on it. I mean, me personally, I think about it. I think about the interface issues. You know, for example, uh, the new phones, they're called smartphones. You go from a device which is basically button-driven to a, a device which is basically touchscreen driven Now, that's a completely different way of playing a game. Yeah. And uh, so we are making the transition uh, from being a button-based game to being a touch. You know, right now I'm, I'm playing with a little bit of artificial intelligence. Um, so I'm, I'm creating a version of Tetris which is sort of a multiple-choice Tetris. It gives you choices of where to go, and you say, I want to go there, I want to go there, I want to go there. And when I saw Tetris the first time, Tetris was the simplest game I have, had ever seen up until then. And I thought, wow, I'm, I'm attracted to this game, and it's simple. So uh, that tells you that there is a, there's a great depth to the game, because it, it's attractive in its simplicity. When we make a new version of Tetris, uh, we always go back to the original. And, it's, and we start from there, and we add from there. Yes. I had an epiphany. epiphany. I, yeah, I was on, in an ambulance on the way to the hospital, and I uh, was dying of a heart attack, and I said, I'm not ready to go. I still have stuff to do. I said, you know, so what is it that I need to accomplish before I die? Cause I, and then I worked it backwards. I said, all right, if I die 20 years from now, or whatever it is, whenever I die, what are the things that I really need to accomplish? And I came upon my missions in life. And my first mission in life is to end the use of carbon-based fuel. The concept of Blue Planet is you start in Hawaii and you back off the planet to get a global view. That's when it becomes a Blue Planet. If we can do it here, then we can do it someplace else. But we have to do it here first. We also caught up with Hank's daughter, Maya Rogers, who has a big role and a big future with the company. We see that Facebook is a whole new kind of, you know, realm of where people play games. I mean, you know, there's no entry barrier per se. I mean, everything is free. Everybody can join Facebook or, you know, any other social network and play with their friends. Tetris Battle has been great. You know, we, we're really finding out that there's so many users out there that are just wanting to play with other people. And so Ace's product, Tetris Battle, it's, you know, they do the whole asynchronous thing. So it feels like you're playing with somebody else but they're not necessarily there live, and so it allows people to play Tetris with people whenever and wherever we want. You, you grew up with Tetris. I, sh I grew up with Tetris for sure, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was great growing up, you know, I mean, we got to play all the latest games, and my parents being in the, in the business, and my brothers just had a great time. So where'd you go to school? Um, I went, I studied my undergrad at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California, and I also went back there for my master's. I got my executive MBA there a couple of years ago. Oh, that's great. So that really prepares you to take the company to the next generation. Yeah, we're trying, trying. Yeah. So what is it like to work at Blue Planet? Um, it's a great culture. We have the admin side, you know, who takes care of all of our legal stuff, and then we have the creative guys who are back there, you know, building the Facebook game. Um, but, you know, once a week, for example, we have a design meeting, which is sort of, you know, it's an open discussion. So we do, we get together for lunch and we discuss whatever we want to discuss, you know, and sort of try to get that creative juice going. It's been a tradition that the company actually goes on a company trip every year. So last year we went to a Grand, the Grand Canyon and the whole Arizona, you know, New Mexico area. Year before that, they went to Thailand. Before that, they went to New Zealand, and so I mean that says a lot, you know, to take a whole company on a company trip, you yeah. know, just to get, you know, so that people get together and we can make a better company environment. At the end of the day, we are an entertainment company. We're trying to entertain our audience. And we got to speak with Minoru Arakawa, who came to Blue Planet from one of the great game companies in the world, Nintendo. Uh, my uh, father-in-law. 
my wife's father asked me if I'm interested in doing Nintendo abroad. <laughs> so uh, I thought it's a good challenge, and uh, uh, we decided to take that responsibility. And uh, uh, on in May 1980, uh, we put everybody in my Mercedes 300 diesel and uh, we left Vancouver, Canada and crossed the country to New York to start Nintendo. And uh, we sold 60,000 uh, units of the arcade games, which is uh, about $2,000 each. So all of a sudden, our sales went from zero to $120 million. <laughs> And then uh, in 1989, uh, we came up with the Game Boy. And uh, we wanted to market this product. And we had uh, good software to go with, like uh, Super Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong. But uh, we need uh, something really, really perfect match to this uh, hardware. And then at that time, we found Tetris. And uh, Tetris uh, was invented uh, by Alexei Pajinov in Russia. And uh, it was getting a little popular at that time already in computer. So one of, uh, many of our R&D people said, this is the perfect game for Game Boy. So I asked uh, Hank Rogers to go to uh, Moscow and find uh, the game, and find the person who owns it and who developed it, and uh, try to secure Tetris for Game Boy. 2002, ah. I retired. My wife doesn't like me stay at home all the time. <laughs> so my wife asked Hank Rogers, do something. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he, he did something then. Yes. <laughs> so he was kind enough to give me the opportunity to start Tetris Online uh -huh. uh, uh, with Hank about uh, four years ago. Yeah. And uh, now we have uh, more than 50 employees in Honolulu, and uh, most of them are young uh, designer, artists, and programmers. Uh, and uh, I met Ace. You met Ace. Ace is incredible. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, he is uh, originally from Korea, and uh, he is a brilliant uh, designer. Yeah, and he loves Tetris. Yes. So, so he is uh, doing very good job uh, making the uh, Tetris battle on the online business especially for Facebook, and uh, we will expand it to open web soon, and uh, it's going to be a very successful product. Finally, we spoke with Jeff Michelina, Executive Director of Blue Planet Foundation, Blue Planet's nonprofit affiliate, which is working hard to rid the world of fossil fuel. Uh, our, our mission is to accelerate Hawaii's clean energy future and hopefully come up with solutions in Hawaii that we can export to the globe. Because at, at this stage, uh, we need to get off fossil fuel as quickly as possible, both for economic security, but also for climate security. You made a movie, I know you did that. And you've been out there in the community. You've been at least as active for this as you were for the Sierra Club, in my, my estimation. Uh, so now, um, you, I think you have public awareness. Do you agree? We, we do, and we've done some market research, and folks are um, definitely paying attention more to the issue of energy and energy security. And it certainly uh, helps, although it hurts everyone, uh, with the price of oil. And you, we feel that through all aspects of our economy, uh, mm -hmm. not only filling up, but also electricity and goods. So that definitely increases awareness as people know that these things are related. Our addiction to fossil fuel is more expensive. So at the legislative front, we're really looking at, uh, again, ways to accelerate clean energy. Um, some of that is uh, barrier busting, you know, what's standing in the way of getting more clean energy on the grid uh, or getting people to adopt efficiency solutions. Some of it's incentive-based, um, and then some of it's just overall restructuring. How do we make it 
easier for the utility to make the right decisions? Um, how do we make it easier for you know businesses? And so it's sort of institutional acupuncture uh, that way. Um, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but the uh, the policy, we also have to look at what's realistic and where people are, and we need to do a lot of education with lawmakers to make them uh, more comfortable. Um, so this year, you know, some of the areas we're focusing, um, one is making sure our existing barrel tax is actually spent for clean energy and food security, uh, and there's support from the governor to do that, and that will mean uh, millions for the state energy office and for R&D for clean energy in Hawaii. Um, another policy that we're really excited about is called on-bill financing. And what makes this so powerful is it makes clean energy and efficiency accessible to everyone, even renters. What does it do? Uh, it, it, what you do is you can pay for your investment um, through the energy savings on your electricity bill. So um, if you don't have $5,000 to throw at a solar hot water sy uh, system, you can simply pay for it through the savings over time. So the Public Utilities Commission would structure the whole program, but certainly that's going to be the private capital that's making the investment. Uh, but this is this is going to be great return for whoever is doing the investing. Sure. Uh, we did a program last year in Molokai to replace uh, inefficient uh, light bulbs with. I saw the movie about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we did about forty thousand light bulbs on the island of Molokai. It cost us about sixty thousand uh, dollars to do the whole program. The savings for the islands can be about six and a half million over the life of the bulbs. So you can leverage a lot of. Um, a lot of gain and just a, a little um, investment. Yeah. Uh, and that's what efficiency is for Hawaii. And I think as more, you know, the more we recognize this and can start ha harvesting that fruit. All in all, the Blue Planet organization emanates creative energy and good works. It's great to have a programming company downtown, just as it was when the Square One company was there in the same space, making the Final Fantasy movie some 10 years ago. Blue Planet is going strong and Tetris provides great entertainment value for a growing online and global audience. And Blue Planet Foundation is also going strong with notable effect on public opinion and community action on clean energy and sustainability. And now, here's our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. On May 26th, ThinkTech, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, and Pacific New Media at UH will present a 2011 legislative update, taking stock on the events and results of the legislative session. Was the budget balanced or not? Reserve your seat for these programs at either hvca.org or thinktechhawaii.com. And now, here's Bill Spencer, president of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, with this week's Spensation. Okay, Bill, we had this great program this past Thursday. It was really terrific. HVCA Think Tech collaboration on reciprocal investments with China. What an interesting program. Well, we, of course, had two panels, one to look at the uh, opportunities for how people can invest in China, and then we looked at the other side of the coin, which had to do with how China could invest in Hawaii and why there's a compelling reason to do so. There's some tough lessons that people have learned over the years that, that we got a lot of insight from, one of which is that uh, when you're investing there, not everything is as it seems. So the bottom line, which may or may not be anything we've heard before, is that you have to be very careful. I mean, there's no surprise there. Nothing's changed in that regard. What I find interesting, though, is that when, when they come the other way, when they want to invest their money in, in Hawaii or the U.S., they're very careful. 
they're as careful as we should be when we go to China. That's right. <laughs> so we can learn from what they do when they come here. We can use those lessons when we go there. <laughs> well, I think so. And I think there, are, there may be the case that uh, the real reasons for investing are not always what we th think they are. Now, clearly, uh, we have a lot to offer with our clean tech entrepreneurs. Uh, and China is uh, very interested in improving their environment. They could benefit from us being the crucible of clean energy in the Pacific. Uh, on the other hand, there's this other class of investors, which are the green card investors, a program that was set up to um, provide money for businesses that create jobs in underserved areas. It's uh, that's another difficult situation because, you know, why are they getting a green card? Who knows why, but it doesn't feel like they're really, you know, coming the way, coming to invest the way we'd like them to come to right. invest. May 26, we have our uh, next joint HVCA Think Tech luncheon, and we're going to do the legislative debrief and really drill down, um, and recruiting right now a very uh, notable speaker or two uh, to discuss what happened and what didn't happen. There's a lot to know, and it's where we should be at May 26. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. Jay Scheidler, through the Scheidler Family Foundation, supports a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hawaiian Electric Company. Kiko and its affiliates Nico on Maui and Helco on the Big Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company which has a large presence in and commitment to Hawaii. Oceanit, a local tech company, is one of Hawaii's largest and most diversified science and engineering companies. Okay, Lori, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week, just like Duke Oishi does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a sponsor. Help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech. I'm Lori Wingard. Aloha, everyone. Aloha.